Hi and welcome to this short video which is just going to introduce you to the multiband compressor which comes with Cubase and how to apply it. Multiband compression itself is a complicated subject and certainly one which would take you some time and practice to get really to grips with. So all we're going to look through here is how you set up the multiband compressor in a basic way and the rules that you can use to apply it so you're getting some benefit from it but without any real chance of having uh, any of the negatives which can come from applying too much compression. So we're just going to run through the compressor itself, the controls and then some quick guidelines to get you up and running. So first things first, uh, as an insert you can apply the multiband compressor. So I've got a mix down of my track here which we're going to put that on. So you can just search for it by typing multiband and there we have it. So it's the multiband compressor there and we can see this it may look slightly different to those of you who've seen the older version of it but the the plugin is largely the same so what have we got here well at the top we've got a frequency chart which shows we've got four bands here where the audio has been divided up into four separate uh, frequency bands and then we've got four identical compressor units one two three and four uh, which are fairly standard with uh, threshold and ratio attack and release so we are going to look at how we can tune this and then set this up but if we just play this track from here we can see as is typical with compressors we can see we've got the uh, input level here and we've got the gain reduction of these bands and at the moment with the default settings uh, bands one and two are seeing a certain amount of compression but bands two and sorry three and four bands three and four are seeing nothing at all Okay, so we're going to divide the audio up into a slightly more sane uh, group of frequencies and then fine tune these uh, individual compressors. So the first thing is to tune each one of these uh, frequency bands. Now if we listen to this audio again and we press the S, the solo button here, we can hear all we're getting is what band one is hearing. So you can tune this by grabbing hold of this point here and dividing them up appropriately. Now depending on the key of your song etc I like to try and get a lot of the bass in there. So there we can hear it's picking up more of the bass notes. If we go too high we can hear the keyboard parts starting to come in etc. So I'm going to stick to it around there so you know heading up towards 200 but certainly no higher than that in this case now the next band typically band 2 is by default fairly wide and encompasses nearly all of the energy you've got hence the, the high compression so I tend to bring that down and in this case it's getting rid of that percussion part the snare etc in there so it's just going to have those so I tend to make it a little less greedy now for band 3 and band 4 the tuning I tend to apply really is to tune band 4 until we've got something tangible so 15k and above I think is pretty much too high so I tend to start out around 10k solo that so we can hear we're getting that real high-end stuff in there but there's not a great deal if we bring it down too far we're, we're again into the wrong you know the wrong realm so we just want really just that real top end and in this case somewhere around 10k is sounding pretty good so that's the first stage is adjusting these and you can see they look a fair bit more even um, but how they look isn't really the important thing is how things sound. Right, the next thing we want to do is to get the right amount of compression. Okay, now say so this is just a very basic uh, overview video just on how to get this up and running. So we're not going to play around with the compressors too much other than altering the threshold. So this threshold control here, which you can see affects the uh, transfer graph and the characteristic of the compressor we are looking for a target gain reduction value now to get that spot on you'd have to listen to the whole track but we're just going to listen to this uh, louder section here so I'm just going to put that on there and put it on cycle 
Now what I'm looking for is about 3 dB of compression on each one of these on this peak meter. So at the moment we can see that band 1 and 2 are reading too much. They're getting up to about 4 dB. So we need to take these up a bit. So I'm going to take that up and go take that one up a bit. But these are reading nothing at all. So now we're in the threes for that. But I want to bring this down and get a similar amount on there. Click on it to reset it. Or it will reset automatically. And the same for band four as well. Band four. A bit lower. So there, again, it's just up a bit. So you can see across the board, we're getting around 3 dB or so as peak. So that's going to be fairly safe to apply, but it will give us some benefit. It won't be a night and day change, but it will be a, a reasonable uh, amount of compression across the board. So the crucial thing we need to do now is we need to be able to compare like with like. Now, you probably know that a compressor, without makeup gain, a compressor will reduce the output level of the signal that's passing through it. And we need to take that into account. And we can take that into account with the output control here. So you can see the output control. Um, and we can do that by doing a mix down. Now, this mix down here um, has a peak level of zero. Okay, so if we were to set our mixer here, bypass this and then do a mixer mix down, we would see a peak level of exactly zero. Okay, we want to set this output here so when our compressor is in circuit, so when we're using the compressor, we see the same peak level. So if I do a mix down now with the compressor on, we will know how much extra we need to give it because this will be hopefully a, ne a negative value okay so we're just going to do a uh, mix down now very briefly so as ever set the locators around the whole thing um, and then export audio mix down <coughs> and we'll just do mbc for multiband compressor one and then export that now because we've only got the multiband compressor uh, in circuit it's not going to take long to do the mix down so it's only sort of three or four seconds and once that's done if we look back at the mixer we can see we've got a peak value of minus 0 0.4 so we need to dial in my 0 0.4 db here to take that back to zero so we put in 0 0.4 and now if we do another mix down so i'll just reset that again we'll do export audio mix down And now we should have a mix down which comes out to 0 dB. And you can see it's just saying that it's clipping, which sometimes happens. So we're just going to take that to 0 0.3 instead. Same thing again. So sometimes it takes a bit of tweaking. Now, hopefully, we should see. There you go, minus 0 0.1. So, in fact, we're 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 a bit out. We're losing 0 0.1 dB. But now, if we bypass this, we can hear the difference between the compressor being there and not, and we're still getting the same peak level, although the average level will obviously be different. So you can hear there's a change in tone. Also in level. subjectively with the multiband compressor on it sounds a bit louder now the overall tonal balance may not be what you want so sometimes for instance here where we're compressing uh, the band 4 we're, we're bringing that in a bit too much maybe so you might want to adjust the levels here but I would leave that till later maybe just turn down the compression here a bit but if we went for a higher peak value so Let's say we went for um, 5 dB, which would be the, the limits of what we'd want to do without really 
known what we were doing. So we're going to try and get five, well, a high four on there, a high four on that, high four on that, and I'm going to leave band four as it is. So we can see those three like that, and we can do the same again. So back on our multiband compressor, I'm going to set that to zero because it makes my life easier. And then audio mix down. So this will be number four. Let's just get the mixer up just to make sure we reset that before we do the mix down. And then export that. <coughs> and this time we will probably see a lower figure because we're compressing a bit more. So this time 0.8, so I'm going to put in 0.7 in there. And then do that mix down again. And then we're just getting some of the benefits of having a multiband compressor on. So we're getting um, compression across all those bands, but without it being too much. So we can see there again, we're pretty much spot on on levels. And now when we listen to it. So while the peak levels aren't changing at all, in fact, the, the peak level of, of overall the whole track is actually slightly lower with the multiband compressor on, the signal sounds a bit louder. And if we import that final mix down version, Let's find that so we've got that one there so let's just import that we may well see a difference so you can see there's been a slight change so these low level bits have been brought up so overall it's a little more compressed <coughs> and these low level parts are just looking a bit louder and sounding a bit louder it's particularly noticeable here but just the overall level is <coughs> is higher whereas the peak level uh, is, is staying the same now unless you spend a fair bit of time practicing with it you are not going to be able to do this without uh, changing the sound of it too much so it is definitely a fine art but if you stick with low values so you stick to peak values of maybe three or four db generally you won't go too far wrong so you're not really drastically compressing it it's only when you start getting above those levels that the sound can suffer you know the sound quality can suffer and then you need to look much more at your ratios and also the attack uh, and release time so we've just left all of that on the defaults at the moment but hopefully now you can see how you can insert the multiband compressor into your uh, mix down track and then use those techniques to tune it as far as the frequencies that are being compressed in each band and then tuning the amount of compression you're getting by altering the threshold to produce a better sounding final mix. If you've enjoyed these videos and found the tips in them useful then subscribe by clicking on the MTT logo in the corner now. In addition visit musictechtuition.com where you'll find tips, tricks and advice as well as information about the books that I've written Music Tech A Level using Cubase 8 and the complete guide to music technology using Cubase 8 which have got a wealth of information, stuff that would take years and years of YouTube videos to cover. These are a great resource whether you're just getting started or you've been sequencing for a few years they will allow you to take your sequencing, recording and production to the next level and give you a really well-rounded education in all aspects of music technology.